All right, folks, welcome to the Axe Hang. Here we go. Darren Hudson here, live at the Timber Lounge. Um, glad you could join us today. We're going to go over a few things that you may not uh, have experienced. Uh, there are going to be new, interesting techniques for you, important ones that we use here at the Timber Lounge to make sure our axe heads hang in there tight. So we want to make sure that things uh, are working for us and we don't want the heads to fly off the handle. In order to do that, I'm going to show you the Axe Vice. It's something that I use daily here at the Timber Lounge. If we ever have a, uh, a head that's a little bit loose, we need to change a wedge. This is the piece of equipment that you definitely want to use. So we're going to have a deep dive into that and we're going to get into some neat things too that you can implement to make sure that your axes are staying nice and tight on your head of your axe. So here we go. This is the patented, no, it's not patented, axe vice. So simple, can't be patented because it's just what it is, folks. I'm gonna um, just point out the pieces here. You're gonna see me use it. So instead of a traditional vice, that has a compressing head which squeezes the two pieces together. This is offset, so the piece that squeezes that goes um, in and out pushes against the handle of the axe. In this case, it's touching the head a little bit, but it's allowing a flex enough. This is an awesome vise. What's gonna happen down here, you have a block of wood that's gonna counter the handle, so it's gonna create a flexation in the handle and give you a snug fit. That ax will not move anywhere. This is a broken head. So today we're gonna to pop that out and we're gonna rehang this handle on that piece of wood. It's gonna be grand. Let's get going. Hey, we might even do a little bit of fun throwing here too at the, lo uh, at the lounge a little later on. We're gonna see how it works. But right now we're gonna to get to it. I'm going to pop this head off wild axe style. So anytime I'm taking the head out, of course we put it in the vise. You can do this part in any vise. This will, uh, you just need to hold it steady. And this is exactly how I take a head off. Very rare, very rare folks, is it that um, your handle's on so tight that you can't just remove the wedge and pop it out of there. And I'm so used to popping out wedges that um, <clears throat> to reuse a handle, I still like to use that same technique. It's good practice, good practice for you. And also I'd like to mention, you need to have a good touch to do this because you don't want to break drill bits. So how it is, that proper technique, the technique for doing this, removing the wedge like you see me doing right here, um, you only go in just the tip, just a little bit. Then you bend your drill bit back and forth. You go in a little deeper, drill a bit more. That, folks, is the technique. Unless you love breaking handles, Ah, uh, breaking drill bits, which nobody does. So here we go. I'm gonna actually zoom in a little bit, see if you can see that a bit better. As much of that wedge as you can move, the better. Now what I do is I try to match up the drill bit size up top here with the size of the wedge. In my practice in this, even though I'm gonna throw this out, this is great practice. This is something that you should learn how to do at home. You want tips and tricks? Here it is, right here. That's how you're gonna remove a wedge to rehang a handle. I'm not rehanging this handle, but I am removing that wedge so that you can see how it's done. That's how I um, do that, folks, just with a T30 drill bit. 
Now here's the other cool part of the axe vise. I'm gonna take this, set it in here, and I'm gonna pound out the handle. So I'm gonna take the handle, give it a tap, and then pound it out through here. And we're gonna see how good I did. Now I was going for the gusto there. I didn't really try to conserve that head, but look, eh. I was a little aggressive down here. You can see the wedge. There's the old wedge. That's how deep it went. Still had a little bit of room to go. But if I wanted to reuse that handle, folks, what I would actually do is I'd go in with a bigger drill bit up top, and then I'd go slightly down, narrower and narrower to make it so that you're only taking out the, the, uh, the wedge and not hitting the side walls. But <clears throat> I was aggressive in getting the job done, really just getting a feel for um, how to remove a wedge pop properly. Now you see, this is a lane ax. I just wanna show you what's going on here. Um, it broke, the handle broke. The uh, kerf wasn't that deep. It really could have been in there deeper. Just looking at this, dissecting this as a forensic criminologist. I know how it broke. Yeah, it broke in the handle. Somebody threw it hard and it snapped the handle. Um, that can happen, happens here lots. But um, I think that wedge could have been in there deeper. Just looking at that, although the head didn't move because we broke it before it had a chance to. But that one's toast. There it goes. We're gonna take our head, inspect our head, how's it looking? <clears throat> this is a lane ax. So as you can see, I have all the tips rounded off there just to make it kind of safety-fied. It's not too sharp, but just sharp enough. Now folks, I'm gonna throw it on this handle really quick. So what we're gonna do here is, let's feel that ax. Throw it on. This is, I hate to say the word is just the lane axe, but I'm not too terribly fussed about the hang. I like that. Looks good. That's going to work. It's going to work. It's going to work just grand. All right. So now, Sharpie. Where's my Sharpie here? Actually, here, why don't we do this view? This is one we all like at home. Let's try this here again. Boom. Now we can see what's going on here a little bit better. I'm going to make a mark. I like that. I'm gonna mark this side, and then I'm gonna mark, well, of course we mark this side. I'll put a dot right there so we know how to match up the sides. Okay, I'm gonna trim that part off. I'm in inspecting this, looks good. Actually, I'll tell you what, what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna go in, shave this off. Hello. Head is going to see a little deeper there now. Look at that, big time. So now I know where it's uh, sitting. I'm actually going to make a lighter mark with a pen. That's where we're at, just for reference. Look at that. Love when they move that nice. Have a look at it again. See where we're at. Okay, so I'm gonna trim it here where I said, and I'm gonna leave a little bit proud. So 
So that way, that way there I know he's gonna have enough to work with. Now this is a good way to split, splinter your wood. You don't wanna do that. So go very light at your finish. You really wanna lighten up. Uh, and then I like to pinch my finger close there. Okay. Now I actually just learned a new trick today. It was on a discussion group. I learned a new trick and I'm so happy for that. Um, how to widen the kerf here so you're guaranteed in order to um, get your wedge in to start. You can pinch your wood. Let's do that. They say use a vise. I have vise grips. Hey, you get to know your vise grips, folks, because if you're on the road and you need to use, uh, you need to do some repairs, vise grips are just just exactly that. They're gonna grip onto this and they're gonna make it tight. So check this out, folks. If I pinch that wood with a pair of vice grips, I can come in here with my saw. Just they're gonna pinch that tighter. Look at that. Pinch that with a saw and I'm gonna make this groove even bigger. Check out that technique, folks. Now, when I go to put my wedge in, it's gonna be able to, oh, go into that bigger groove, has more room to go into, but it also has that angle, that taper that I want to meet with the ax head. You don't want it to taper too much, but everything is a calculation. We're talking balance points. I was just sawing right on the stump here. That's a pretty deep kerf, but I like it. I like to normally go down with my kerf about three quarters of the way. So from the height of where the head of the ax is, which is gonna be about here and down to here. That's deep, but um, I think I like it and go with that. Here's my ax head. So, line up my points. Everybody's happy. Saw nice and tight. And look, I have a lot of room to get a wedge in there. Isn't that gorgeous? I'm gonna have a look at my wedge supply situation here. I'm gonna go with a wild ax wedge. Just that little small guy there. Try that one. So now what's it? You know, I'm gonna go, actually, I'm, gonna, I'm feeling one of these whiskey rivers. I'm gonna go narrow with this wedge. What I like to do with my wedges is take the grinder, Let's show you here. And I like to put a, a knife's edge on the tip of the wedge. And that's gonna make it sharp enough to go into that piece of wood. Because if you bottom out, if you bottom out in your wedge, you want it to cut down into the wood. You want it to keep going and go a little deeper. So this is a wider wedge than the head. So I'm gonna go ahead. Oh, look at that, this ax is actually sharp. You want your wedge to always be tight. You want it to squeeze 
into that wood. Of course, you, it has to be uh, narrow enough to go into the head, but yeah, you want it to have pressure, not only in this direction, as you could imagine a wedge would, but you want pressure in this direction, every direction just squeezing out against the formation of that handle inside of the eye. So as you've seen me do this before, the Darren Hudson way of setting a wedge is not like pounding, pounding it from the top. You can do that a little at the start, but if you want that head to go on tight, you know the trick. You pound from the handle, the head comes up because of the heavier mass is affected by the lighter mass. So I'm gonna put this handle down, pound the handle in, and that's doing two things. That's pounding that wedge in and up, but also drawing the head up as well. Hey folks, I'm doing these series of videos to show you my skill sets. Really, I need to have not just a lot, but really break this stuff down. But uh, this is how I like to do it. And uh, you can watch me work here. So we're just hanging the axe hang at the timber lounge. I like that. That's in there pretty good. That's pretty firm right now, so I'm happy with that. You can see there's a lot of width there. That tells me that axe, the wedge is in that axe head really nicely. I'm gonna go ahead, trim that off. But the reason I leave it a little bit proud here is because I know in the lanes what's gonna happen is um, you're gonna beat this axe head around a lot. Eventually, the fibers with inside of the wood are gonna get a little weaker and that ax head's gonna creep down on the handle a little further. And then this wedge is gonna have to go in a little deeper. So I'm going to keep that ax head, that wedge initially a little bit proud because I know we're gonna drive it in deeper a little later on. It's just gonna happen. The wood fibers are gonna break down. Wood fibers are gonna break down that ax wedge. It's gonna go in a little deeper. But we're gonna see how this wedge does. This is a poplar, <laughs> poplar wedge from a poplar company. Oh, you gotta like that sound. And that's a nice soft wedge, really nice for this head right here. So go back to the different views. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead. Tidy that up just a little bit. And now it has a really long handle. Handle length for me, I usually like about, this is just gonna be for the lanes. So if you, we had Ashley Kelly in here the other day and Ashley was throwing an ax. Her handle was uh, too short. Used a longer weight, a longer length handle and immediately we got the better results. Um, but where it, if she's a competitor, she's going overseas to compete. She wants to make sure she throws from the line. Using a wind dragon in the lanes, a lot of times we're going to have throwers that they can step over the line. It's just for their experience. So I'm going to cut this handle shorter. And a shorter handle is going to last longer because it's not going to hit as hard handle first. Okay, so I am actually gonna go brave and chop the heck out of this. I'm going to go to 26 and three quarters for this ax handle. I'm going 26 and three quarters right there. Okay, I'm gonna cut this. Dave Truman ax handle.
again, go easy at the end. Dave, you've been making some great handles. They've been a pleasure to work with. Okay, folks, there we go. We have ourselves an ax. Next step, what I'm gonna do with this ax, of course, put tape on the handle, big time. Um, that, and I may even do a little bit of fun stuff too, is a little bit of hardening techniques. I'm gonna take and take the blowtorch to this ax handle and dry and strengthen the fibers as we char it black. Okay, here we go. We're gonna throw at these targets right here, folks. Actually, that guy is um, one target in front of the other target. I should spray it down first. We're gonna uh, throw this ax. It's a lightweight dragon with a super lightweight handle. And uh, let's see what we can do. Actually, I'm gonna go enter around of six throws and one round start. I'm gonna promote axis squared here, folks. So there we go. Great. Let me put some water on this target. This, uh, the face of this target, well, it's still a little bit wet. Um, shoot, I should have watered it earlier. We always want to give it some, uh, some high quality H2O. Make sure this thing is lubricated. So the axis can go in there and not split the heck out of it. So there we go, folks. Lightweight axe. We're going one test and then we're gonna go six counting throws. I'm keeping score on axes squared. We're gonna see what happens. Oh yeah, shoot, I gotta zoom out here a little bit so you guys can see what's going on. And we're gonna throw this lovely wind dragon. And like I say, this is a lane axe with a short handle. So it's definitely, I'm gonna stand a little bit closer and see how we do. One test. Whoa! Ha ha! Definitely true, definitely true to its name. This is the wind dragon and this flies like the wind. Some people that like a lightweight axe are gonna love this axe. Woo! I'm gonna step back a little bit further to see what happens here, folks, because the thing about a lightweight ax, you know the story, is it can be very tricky to throw. Stepping back. Oh, yeah. This is on my coach account. First throw is a four. All right. Oh, happy with that. That's decent. So I will take a four. I'll show you scoring with axis squared here. There we go. This is the uh, scoring app. I'll show you as we go along what we have. And uh, right now we're going to get the show on the road. I'm stepping back. Oh, a little high. Three points, okay. Rats. Make sure I get that right. Oh, my goodness. This is a beautiful throwing tax. Just light, light as a feather. Unbelievable. That was a four. Let's see if we can hit a five. 
was a nice, nice throw, nice alignment. But of course, yeah, it's hard to keep it down. Oh. Honestly, if I'm being truthful, I thought that was going for a bullseye. Just it's so light. Feels nice. It's just, you know, last throw. Light, light, light. Back and up. Oh! Well, that's a four. And that's it for this axe here. We have our uh, Wild Axe Wind Dragon. Great axe. It's going to be in the lanes. If you want to use this axe, make sure you come to the Timber Lounge. We hope to see you guys here and uh, you can throw later. Be sure to like and uh, follow us on Wild Axe TV. We're gonna have some more stuff. The Axe Hang is gonna be on the regular here every Sunday. So that's the plan. We'll see you next week on the Axe Hang. Oh! Almost a bullseye.